Uh, welcome back to our discussion on the applications of derivative to economics, commerce and management. So, let us just recall in the previous lecture, we looked at uh, the notion of uh, differentiability for special functions uh, like exponential function, the log function and so on. And then we looked at uh, its uh, applications of the derivative uh, approximation of uh, how derivative is used to find approximate values of a function at a nearby point. And that gave us uh, some nice uh, applications in economics and commerce our subject. Namely, we found a relation namely the marginal uh, of propensity to consume uh, plus the marginal propensity to save is a constant that is equal to 1. So, um, we will look at more applications of derivative in this today's lecture. So, let us just uh, start recalling the notion of uh, elasticity. So, recall that the price elasticity of demand um, we denoted it by the epsilon d. This is the epsilon the Greek letter with a lower suffix d indicating this is the coefficient of elasticity of demand. Uh, if the price demand function is p equal to f of q, then we define this as the percentage change uh, in q uh, divided by the percentage change in uh, p. So, percentage change is in demand divided by the percentage change in p. And once you write the percentage uh, in terms of the fractions, this just gives you that delta q by delta p multiplied by p by q. So, what is delta q? that is the change in the demand right q resulting in a demand for p that is delta p at the price q and at that point the price is p. So, that was how we defined the and we gave a reason why uh, it should be defined this way the coefficient of elasticity this constant which uh, gives the sensitiveness of how the function changes. So, we had had a discussion in our previous lecture. So, we take it from there and this is the uh, definition of coefficient of elasticity of demand which comes out to be delta q by delta p del change in q divided by change in p multiplied by p by q. For a linear function if you recall we saw that uh, this was always a constant. Okay. Uh, so, we do not have to bother much that was equal to the slope. For a general price function p equal to f of q, so it is natural to define instead of delta p by delta q, it is natural to define uh, replace delta q by delta p by d q by d p. We are not saying we are just replacing that fraction by this fraction. We are replacing the fraction delta q by delta p by the derivative of q at the point uh, derivative of p with respect to q 1 over of that. Okay. So, here essentially we are assuming that uh, d p by d q is not equal to 0 otherwise this uh, will not this formula will not make sense. Right. So, the coefficient of elasticity of demand is defined as 1 over the derivative of p with respect to q multiplied by p by q. So, this is the definition of coefficient of elasticity for non constant functions. For constant functions this will come out to be same as the earlier one in any case. right? So, let us look at an example. So, given a demand function p equal to say 60 minus q square. So, here as uh, you see that as q uh, increases the price is decreasing. right? As q is increasing minus q square that quantity will increase right and minus q square will become a larger now negative quantity as q increases. So, p will become smaller. So, uh, for this um, if we uh, differentiate with respect to q on both sides we can differentiate uh, with respect to p on both sides if you like. So, d p by d p that is equal to 1 is equal to 60 derivative of 60 is 0 minus 2 d q by d p. So, that means d q by d p is equal to minus 1 over 2 q. This is the kind of thing we will do it very often. Uh, we will assume that d p by d q is 1 over d q by d p and so on. right? 
So, the coefficient of elasticity for demand at a price p which we said is uh, equal to d q by d p. So, this is d q by d p into p by q. So, that comes out to be p by minus uh, 2 q square. And if we value, put the value of uh, uh, in terms of uh, p itself, okay, then this q square from here minus q square is equal to p minus 60. So, if we put that value here, so this comes out to be equal to p divided by 2 times p minus 60, right. And at a point say p equal to 44, okay, this is equal to, so put, so this is uh, elasticity of demand at a price p, right. So, if you want at a particular price, you put that value. So, in this formula, we will put that value. So, we get this value. So, it is minus 1 dash 1.374. So, uh, the coefficient of uh, elasticity of demand at a price 44 is minus 1.375. So, this is how we calculate. And if you recall, we had uh, given interpretation of the elasticity for uh, <coughs> demand uh, is uh, when it is less than uh, between 0 and uh, minus 1 and minus 1 to infinity. At minus 1, it is unit uh, elasticity of demand and uh, uh, on the side minus 1 to minus infinity, uh, this, this is the uh, proportionate, this is the sensitiveness of uh, the. So, this is how you calculate uh, the coefficient of elasticity of demand at a particular price and then you interpret it. Let us look at another example. <clears throat> we want to know uh, elasticity of demand for a, a exponential function. So, let us say the price and demand are related by the function q is equal to a raised to power a into p raised to power b. Price is always a positive quantity. So, that uh, does not uh, affect us. Okay. So, where a and b are constants. For this price and uh, demand and uh, price and uh, demand function, what is dQ by dP? If you take dQ by dP, this is an exponential function with the base p, right? So, uh, sorry, this is the power function. Uh, p is fixed, uh, p is varying, and b is fixed. So, uh, the power is fixed. So, um, it will come b power comes down, p b power minus one. So, d q by d p. So, for this, this is a power function. So, a b into p raised to power minus b, b raised, p raised to power b minus 1, differentiating this equation with respect to p. Now, we can put the value of uh, on, right. So, the coefficient of elasticity at the price p is d q by d p, the derivative <coughs> into p by q. So, this value is a b p raised to power p raised to power b minus 1 into p by q. So, p and p that gives you uh, p raised to power b by q and q is also equal to a b raised to power p. So, that is equal to b. So, coefficient of elasticity uh, of demand uh, at any price p is same value that is equal to b that is a constant uh, for the power function. So, when the demand and supply are related by a power function namely q is equal to a p raised to power b then the coefficient of elasticity of demand at any price is the same constant as b. So, now uh, it will depend upon whether this uh, coefficient b is uh, positive negative and so on. So, let us uh, look at uh, we will look at this uh, later on what the implications this has. So, if b is equal to 1 right coefficient of elasticity at every price is a constant okay so and so on so that is how you calculate the elasticity of demand for functions which are not necessarily <clears throat> let us uh, uh, do a bit more of uh, develop more calculus techniques to be applied to our uh, subject so let us define what is called a uh, we have already defined it actually a function uh, f is said to be an increasing function if this graph is rising up as you move from left to right geometrically. So, mathematically that means if x 1 is less than or equal to x 2, 
then f of x 1 is less than or equal to f of x 2. So, that is uh, increasing function. So, if let us assume our function is an increasing function, then uh, what is the uh, ratio of the change for any point c f of c plus h minus f of c divided by h. Because the function is increasing, if h is positive, then c plus h will be on the right side of c. So, f of c plus h will be bigger than f of c and h is positive. So, this ratio will be always <coughs> a positive quantity. right? And if uh, h is negative, then what can you say f of c minus h will be a point on the left side of f of c. So, this quantity will be a negative quantity and h is negative again this will be a positive quantity. So, uh, uh, we can say we do not have to put this condition that uh, h is equal to 0 this quantity is always bigger than or equal to 0 for all h sufficiently small whether h is positive or negative. For positive it is obvious, for negative also it is h negative also it is obvious because c minus h will be on the left side of c. So, f of c will be bigger than f of c plus h. So, numerator will be negative, h is negative. So, this ratio will be positive. So, this ratio is positive, non <coughs> positive uh, we should say uh, the non-negative because the function could be a constant. So, it is non-negative for all h uh, uh, bigger than 0 um, or less than 0 sufficiently small. So, that means, in a neighborhood of the point c, this ratio is always the positive quantity. So, if, there is a, if uh, the derivative, if the limit of this as h goes to 0 exists, because this is always a non-negative quantity, so the derivative also will be a non-negative quantity. The limit has to be non-negative. So, that is the property of the limit. The limit of a function, if a function is non-negative, then this limit cannot become uh, negative. Right? It has to come closer and closer to a value and that value cannot be a negative quantity. So, uh, by the property of limits, limit of this quantity is bigger than or equal to 0 provided that limit exists and if we assume that f dash the function is differentiable then f dash of c is bigger than or equal to 0. So, what we are saying what we are saying is if a function is increasing and differentiable at the point c then the derivative is bigger than or equal to 0. So, that is a conclusion that we are getting from here. So, we get if f of a b is such that f is increasing and differentiable say at a point x then f dash of x is bigger than or equal to 0. right? So, that is the conclusion that we are getting. So, it is a property of the function over the whole interval a b. right? If f is increasing in the interval a b, open interval a b and the derivative at any point is bigger than or equal to 0, then uh, and uh, increasing then the derivative is bigger than or equal to 0. So, f non f increasing over the whole interval a b implies the derivative is bigger than or equal to 0 at every point in a b. A similar uh, result will hold if f is uh, decreasing. So, if it is decreasing <coughs> the uh, ratio f of x naught plus h minus f of c plus h minus f of c divided by h will always be non is in a non positive quantity will be less than or equal to 0. So, the limit has to be less than or equal to 0. So, a similar result holds when it says that if f is decreasing f is uh, uh, we put both the words this is wrong. So, we should not write this. So, f is decreasing and differentiable. So, delete this word ignore this word if f is decreasing and differentiable then it implies the derivative is less than or equal to 0. So, this is a typo here. So, it is decreasing here. Right. So, uh, we have got uh, two important things namely uh, if a function is uh, increasing in an open interval then derivative is bigger than or equal to 0 and if the function is decreasing in an open interval and differentiable then the derivative is less than or equal to 0. So, both the conditions have to be satisfied increasing and differentiable right implies derivative is bigger than or equal to 0 and similarly decreasing and differentiable implies the derivative is less than or equal to 0. I uh, would like to prove a converse of this theorem and for that we need uh, uh, a result called Lagrange's mean value theorem 
which in itself is one of the important theorems of uh, calculus. So, let us state that theorem what is called Lagrange's mean value theorem. It says that let f from a closed bounded interval a b to r be a continuous function. So, first of all the function is defined on a closed bounded interval a b such that so, here should be a gap such that f dash exists on a b that means, the function is differentiable on the open interval a b at least that much should be there and it is uh, continuous on the closed bounded interval a b. We did not prove this property that differentiability at a point implies continuity that in fact, uh, uh, when we did approximations one could have easily uh, shown that property. Uh, probably uh, let me fill that gap by showing you this now. So, let me show you uh, that result. So, using f from a b to r and c is a point belonging to a b. f differentiable at x is equal to c. So, what does this imply? this implies that f dash of c which was the limit h going to 0 f of uh, c plus h minus f of c divided by h this limit exists. So, uh, from here what we got was f of c plus h minus f of c was approximately equal to h times f dash of c. Uh, what is the difference? We can write that is equal to plus h times some quantity let us write the error that we are making right, where this error goes to 0 as h goes to 0. That is what we saw in this approximations. So, if this let us recall this uh, equation. So, this is true. So, what is the limit of this as h goes to 0? at the point f of c plus h minus f of c. So, that will be equal to by limit theorems it is limit h going to 0 of f dash h times f dash of c plus limit h going to 0 of h times a quantity epsilon h. But observe is h times a scalar. So, this term goes to 0. So, this term goes to 0 and this is also going to 0. So, this limit is equal to 0. So, limit of f of c plus h minus f of c is equal to 0. We can write this as limit h going to 0 of f of c plus h is equal to f of c. So, this result can be written as this and that means what that says that f of c plus h goes to f of c as h goes to 0. So, that says so a differentiable so implies f continuous x is equal to 0. So, what we are saying is if f is a function which is differentiable at a point uh, c then it is also continuous uh, at the point s x is equal to c. Of course, uh, note that the converse does not happen that f we said f differentiable implies f continuous. The converse need not hold. That means, f continuous at x is equal to c need not imply f differentiable at x is equal to c. Uh, for example, if that was the case then the, what was the need to define differentiability? that is a obvious uh, thing to say, but we can have an example if you like. Look at the example f of x is equal to x say mod x for every x belonging to r. So, for this function if I look at the graph of this function, the graph of this function looks like. So, this is y equal to x and this is y equal to minus x. So, that is the graph of the function y equal to. So, it is continuous, but at this point you cannot draw the tangent it is not differentiable. So, you can prove that uh, rigorously also. So, uh, let us come back to our uh, uh, 
uh, statement of the theorem that is Lagrange's mean value theorem. It says if a function is defined in a closed bounded interval and it is continuous on the closed bounded interval, in the whole of the interval it is continuous including the end points and differentiable in the interval a b. So, differentiability in the open interval a b will imply the differentiability in the open interval a b, but it is need not imply uh, will imply continuity in the open interval a b, but it need not imply continuity at the end points. So, we need continuity at the end points a b. Then the theorem says if these two conditions are satisfied for the function, it is continuous in the closed bounded interval and differentiable in the open interval a b, then there is at least one point c belonging to the open interval a b say that the difference f b minus f of a is equal to b minus a uh, f dash of c. Um, this uh, does not look like a very great result written this way, but supposing let us uh, rewrite this as a is not equal to b let us say and divide by this that gives you f b minus f of a divided by b minus a is equal to f dash of c. Then what does this uh, ratio f b minus f of a divided by b minus a signify? That is a slope of the chord joining the point a comma f of a with b comma f of b on the graph of the function and it says that the slope of the chord joining the end points of the graph will be equal to the slope of the tangent at some point in between and that looks like a very profound uh, uh, geometric statement. So, let us uh, look at uh, that statement. Uh, let me uh, show you that uh, in a dynamic geometry environment, what do I mean by this statement. So, what we are saying is, uh, okay, looks too big. So, let me shorten it a bit and let me let me zoom out a bit more. Okay. So, now that is good enough. So, this green one is the graph of the function on the interval a b. So, this is the point a somewhere here and this is the point b somewhere here. If you want I can locate this point a and b both. So, let us uh, locate the points by drawing lines, lines uh, perpendicular. So, let me write draw a line here and draw a line here and draw a line here and a line here. And let me find out these points of intersection of these two. So, uh, intersect. So, let me intersect uh, this and this. And this. Okay. It has not taken that. So, let us uh, select intersect. So, intersect this with okay, anyway let us not bother. So, this is the point A and this is the point B. So, in this interval the function is defined and this is the point A comma f of A and this is the point A comma f of B. So, uh, looks like a nice smooth curve. So, let us uh, uh, let me draw the tangent to this curve at some point. So, let us So, let us uh, uh, view, let us view uh, algebra and that point A is not visible. So, let me make this point A visible. Okay. So, let us uh, show the tangent at a point. Okay. So, this is a, a tangent at a point A and let us uh, move this point A. Okay. So, let us uh, move this point A. So, you see if I move this point A, this number is showing me the slope of this tangent line. What is the slope of this uh, line? See I have computed the slope here, slope is when the difference is 1 in the x coordinate y 2 minus y 1 divided by x 2 minus x 1 for a line. So, if x 2 minus x 1 is 1, so the height gives you the slope. So, that is the slope of this line. Okay. Uh, so, slope of this line is 1. So, um, I would like to find out uh, this is the tangent is slope at this point is 2. I would like to see whether there is a point where its slope becomes equal to 1 or not. So, you see if I move the point up, so slope is increasing 
because it is sloping more and more if I go down the slope is decreasing 2.6, 2.5 and 2.4, 1.7, so 1.4, 1. 1. Ah, so here, so now so that means I have got the tangent parallel to the uh, chord. So, what it says is for the, the theorem says that if the function is continuous in the closed bound interval a b and is differentiable that means at every point I can draw the tangent then there is a point on the graph where the tangent is parallel to the uh, slope of the chord. So, that is uh, I showed shown you dynamically that yes that actually happens uh, ok. So, uh, so, let us come back to uh, our uh, theorem namely uh, so this is what the theorem says it says that for a function defined in a closed boundary interval a b if I draw find draw this chord joining the end points the function is continuous in the closed boundary interval differentiable in the open interval then for some point c on the graph the slope will be equal to slope of the chord. So, this is a very uh, important theorem in uh, calculus uh, you will see many of the outcomes of this theorem and we will discuss it in our next lecture. So, uh, in today's lecture what we have done is we have looked at the notion of uh, uh, coefficient of elasticity of demand for a general function and how derivative is used to define the coefficient of elasticity of demand at a price p. We looked at some examples then we looked at uh, how calculus can help us to um, related with that property of the derivative. So, we said if a function is monotonically increasing then uh, the derivative uh, if a function is monotonically increasing in an open interval then its derivative must be bigger than or equal to 0. And if a function is monotonically decreasing in an open interval then its derivative should be less than or equal to 0. So, uh, and so, we looked at uh, those two properties and if the uh, we will see some more consequences of that uh, as a consequence of the Lagrange's mean value theorem which we proved last. So, we will continue this in the next lecture. Thank you.